Today we're going to be working on fitting tubing. I'm going to show several different ways to put it together. Talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each. Alright, start off with we're going to work on 45 degree angles. Uh, they're the simplest. Some of the most common fit up you see is 45's. Uh, when you're making a 90 it's just a simple way to go. So what we're going to do on our 45 ends I'm going to start with the square flush on the edge of the tubing, draw our line, and make sure to go around the edge. If you notice, square tubing actually has a rounded edge, and those rounded surfaces can be deceiving if you stop at the squared off part, you're actually going to miss a big part of your layout. Always go all the way around where it squares off. And we'll flip it over. We will connect the two lines. If they don't connect, that means we got off somehow, so that's a way of double checking ourselves. So we're going to cut these parts. Got some pre cut parts to save us some time and noise of cutting tools. So when you make 245s, they come together make a really good 90. Don't trust that it's 90. Actually take your square, fit your parts up right, and then you'll tack it together and weld them out. These are very fast, very easy fit up. Works out really well when you need parts uh, made at a 90 degrees and you want to be able to cut them all the same length. So when you're making a square box, you can cut every part the same length, 45 every one of them. They come together and work really good. Another way to go about putting square tubing together is extremely simple. You just take your tubing and you butt it up. Take your square, make it 90 degrees. Very simple concept. One thing you have to remember when you're doing that, however, got some smaller pieces here. If you cut all your parts the same size, and then you go to putting them together to build a box, you're going to realize real fast that you made a rectangle and not a square. Very common mistake with beginning fabricators, but it is a simple solution. What you want to do is cut your inside parts shorter than your outside parts and the distance they're going to be cut is twice the width of the metal because you're adding the width here you're adding the width here so if we take new pieces of metal you can see that if you subtract twice the thickness of the metal we end up with this smaller piece so we are now going to remove these replace them with the smaller pieces and then we end up back with a squared box. Once again, a very simple way to make a squared off part. We just have to remember to do our math, subtract the width of the metal for our interior parts. Now another way we can put square tubing together is we can go ahead and cut all our parts the same length, but we want to cut them the width of the material smaller than the overall length of the part. So these pieces here are six inches long. They are two inches wide. So we are going to make an eight inch box. We start with six inches. We put two inches on the outside and that gives us our eight. Six plus two is eight. Six plus two is eight. This is Good way to make parts when you want to be able to just cut them all the same length because you can set your saw up with a gauge, cut them all at the same length and not have to have varying sizes that you have to keep up with. You just have to remember to subtract the width of the metal first. This is also a very strong way to put material together because we don't have joints directly in line with each other. Now in the other design, We have these joints lined up 
And anytime you put joints lined up, if the force is applied correctly, it can cause those parts to come apart at the joint and make it a lot weaker. But when we stagger those joints, this configuration will be much stronger than the 45 or the squared off part with two small pieces in the middle. We have a third way that we can join our tubing together. And this one is coping. And if you remember from previous videos, coping means removing material from one part in the same shape as the part that's going to replace it. So this is a piece of square tubing. It is two inch square. So what we want to do is come over and mark our two inches. And then we're going to transfer that two inches around three sides. We're going to leave this fourth edge. And now we're going to come over here to the wall thickness, which I can draw in because on this tubing that happens to be where the bend is. Come over the wall thickness and we're going to leave that amount. So when you get done, you end up with two pieces. One looks like this, and then the piece that came out. So we cut it on three sides, pull this piece out. This becomes our scrap part, and we just dispose of it. And we go ahead and use this part, and bring in our large piece, butt up against it. When we square it up, we should have a nice V groove here to weld. And we've got a bevel groove on this side, a flare bevel. So those are the several different ways that you can join square tubing together. Uh, they all have their own purpose. Every one of them works well. Sometimes based on design of the parts and the force applied, one of them will work better than the other. Thank you for joining us today.